In this video, I will give an example of valid reasoning called modus ponens and an example of invalid reasoning, the fallacy of denying the antecedent. In a previous video, I explained logic and what we mean by valid and invalid reasoning. I introduced the example of modus tollens, a form of valid reasoning, as well as the fallacy of asserting the consequent, a form of invalid reasoning. This time I will show you two more examples which are very similar. The first example is called modus ponens. Yes, it is another weird Latin name. It sounds like modus tollens and its syllogism is very similar, so it's easy to confuse the two. Modus ponens is a type of argument that uses deductive reasoning. Let's look at the syllogism. It begins with a premise. If P, then Q. If P is true, then Q must also be true. P entails Q. Note that this is the same premise as we saw in modus tollens. As before, the premise is assumed to be true. The second premise, P is true. We know P is true. Again, if we assume this is correct, we can move on to the final statement. The final statement is the conclusion. Therefore, Q is true. Now, this might seem obvious. The initial premise did say that if P is true, then Q must also be true and we assume this premise to be correct. So if we also know that P is true, then the conclusion must be Q is also true. Let's look at a concrete example. The example concerns people wearing glasses to correct their vision. As you know, some people are short-sighted, some are long-sighted, and some have perfect vision and you can get glasses to correct your vision. So how does modus ponens work here? We begin with the premise. If I wear corrected glasses, then I must be long or short-sighted. If we agree this to be correct, we can move on to the next statement. The second premise. I am wearing corrective glasses. We can see the glasses being worn and we know their prescription. If we agree this premise is correct, we can move on to the next statement. The conclusion. Therefore, I must be long or short sighted. In other words, I don't have perfect vision. The reasoning here is valid and the conclusion is correct. Modus ponens is, I think, quite straightforward, but it can easily be changed to a fallacious argument. The fallacy is called denying the antecedent. It is similar to modus ponens, which I think makes people think the fallacy is actually a form of valid reasoning. So let's look at its syllogism. The first statement is the premise. If P, then Q. If P is true, then Q must also be true. Hopefully this premise looks familiar. As before, we assume this is correct and move on. The second premise, not P. P is false. Again, we assume this is correct and move on to the final statement. The conclusion, therefore, not Q. In other words, we conclude that Q is false. Look at that for a moment. Where do you think the fallacy lies? The final statement, the conclusion, is what makes it a fallacy, because observing P is false says nothing about Q. It is possible, for example, for P to be false and Q to be true, and it is this scenario that makes the argument fall down. Let's look at a concrete example. Using the same scenario of people wearing glasses to correct their vision, let's look at the syllogism. We begin with the same premise. 
If I wear corrective glasses, then I must be long or short sighted. If we agree this to be correct, we can move on to the next statement. The second premise, I don't wear glasses. I'm not wearing any now, I don't own any glasses and have never worn them. If we assume this premise is correct, we move on to the final statement. The conclusion, therefore I must have perfect vision. Perfect vision is the opposite of being long or short-sighted. Do you see why this is a fallacy? The conclusion here is fallacious. It is wrong to conclude that you have perfect vision based on the two premises alone. It might be that you cannot afford glasses, or you haven't seen an optician, or you are not doing anything that requires perfect vision. All of these are reasonable examples that demonstrate the argument to be invalid. I should also point out that it is wrong to say that because the argument is fallacious, you therefore don't have perfect vision. This is also invalid. We do not know whether you have perfect vision or not. All we do know for certain is that you don't wear glasses. I'll finish by putting modus ponens, the valid logic, next to the fallacy denying the antecedent. You can see how similar they are, but the small difference between them is the difference between being valid and invalid. Have you seen people making this mistake? So there you have it, modus ponens and the fallacy of denying the antecedent. Join me next time for a look at another logical fallacy.